everybody should know how to preach and teach the word of God. That's what we're supposed mm-hmm. to be doing. Mm-hmm. So why is it you have created literally an entity that does not exist scripturally? There is no such thing as a special pioneer scripturally. This is a corporate entity. This is a corporate concept. You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hey, this is JT. Hi, and I'm Lady C. This is Paul. (laughs) Back again. All right, Paul. What are we going to talk about today, Paul? Well, you know, I thought it would be good for us to talk about all the different schools that are in the organization, because I'm sure you remember, they call these schools, when you're in them, they call it divine teaching. Right, you're being taught by Jehovah. They call it divine teaching. So you're 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 led to believe that yeah, this is Jehovah teaching you, right? And you know, in my opinion, you know, if we really wanted to get an idea of what is divine teaching, well, you'd look to Jesus because I mean, he was a great teacher. He taught what his father, you know, told him to teach. Um, but then, you know, I looking back now, now that I'm I've left the organization. I look at the schools and I'm like, it was nothing compared to the way Jesus taught. And, you know, today, you know, we can talk about some examples of things that went on in the school and things that were taught. And again, it, it's, it's just showing that things just keep repeating. And it's, this isn't about complaining. It's about being completely honest about what goes on and what is taught. And, and, and that's, again, some things that, you know, witnesses, they're in, they have that fear factor to talk about some of the things that have gone on. They're afraid to talk about it because they're going to be labeled as negative or, or whatever. But it's just being honest about what's going on, right? So, you know, maybe we can talk a little bit about some of the schools, you know, and some of our experiences because you've been through them. I think uh, uh, Lady C has been through a few, um, like the, the Pioneer School. Um, I don't know if you did, you didn't go to Pioneer School, right? I didn't get a chance to go to Pioneer School because the first year I started pioneering, I actually got picked up to go to Bethel uh, a few months later. So I never made it actually to the end of my first year as a pioneer, and yep. I'll end up going to Bethel. So, but I'm very familiar with the Pioneer School because we held it in our congregation because we had a number of pioneers in our congregation who participated in the Pioneer School. So here's what I remember about Pioneer School because I, I went to it twice. The one thing I remember was the massive amount of homework. Like I was, I was sitting, studying, reading Watchtower articles, looking up insight uh, publication, looking up scriptures for four to five hours every single night. And sometimes you still didn't finish it, right? And um, you had, you know, the book, The Shining as Illuminators. And I remember the first one. And there were Bible verses all over the place. And people had... Were cutting, they would actually cut up Bibles and paste in the verses because uh, they had nowhere to write. Then they made the margins a little bit bigger. And, but it was all just about this cramming in. Like you probably had, I don't know, 100, 150 scriptures to look up every evening. And there was no time to meditate on them. Like they would have been way better just to give us a couple and say, you know, read this and read the context and think about it. But it was all about verse, 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 publication, publication. And the goal I felt was that. The instructor is going to ask you these questions while you're in class about the material. And it's all about getting the right answer according to what's written in the publications. Um, so, you know, the, the more you could cite what was written in the magazine, the more correct your answer was. And, and really, it was exhausting. You know, older ones had a real hard time. Younger ones did a little bit better. Um, but... You know, when I look back on, on Pioneer School, I don't remember a single new thing that I learned. I went twice. I don't remember anything special that I learned. What I do remember is the people that I went there with. And, you know, there was a lot of nice people. I, I, don't, I don't, you know, bash witnesses. I'm not against the individuals who are there, but um, there's some really nice people. And I remember those people. I remember that, you know, the time that we'd sit having coffee break or, or whatever. But when you really think back about it, it's not about what you learned. It, it was probably about who you were there with. And it was just, it was just cram, cram, cram. It was just overload of information. And it was all about uh, looking into the publications and knowing what the Watchtower, the King Ministry said. It wasn't about, hey, you know what? Let's read. Uh, we want you to read uh, these chapters of the Bible tonight and meditate on them. Tomorrow we're going to talk about it. 
right? It was never about the Bible. It was about the publications. It was just, you know, cramming it all in. So, like, I mean, that was my impression. I don't know. Lady C, like, what do you remember about Pioneer School? Sure. Well, you know, what I remember about um, Pioneer School was, like you said, the people. And I will tell you a, a short story about when my cousin went to Pioneer School and she talked about how they had all this Chinese food and all these ethnic foods and stuff and, and how great it was. So then it was time for me to go to my Pioneer School and I was like, oh my God, where's all the food that she was talking about? You know, cause it wasn't the same group of people. It was a different okay. congregation. I didn't know how they got it together, but what it was, it was the actual uh, local congregation that actually fed you at the Pioneer School. So we didn't have all the good food that she talked about. So, I mean, I was looking forward to all this good food, but um, I remember um, it was about the people cause in my class, it was all about a fashion show because sometimes the ladies were trying to outdress each other at the school. <laughs> and um, so that, that was what I remembered. And I remembered um, we all felt special. I mean, when you would be sitting there at the, um, in your school and the, and, the, and the brothers are doing the, the school, they're conducting the school because, you know, we had two circuit overseers who did our school and yeah. they made you feel so special. Like, you are here because you really appreciate spiritual things and you think, you know, you're, you're, you've chosen the better portion. And so I remember sitting there feeling like, oh, wow, you know, I'm special. Um, you know, people are going to look at us differently when we leave here because we're going to be shining examples of what you're supposed to be as a Jehovah's Witness, you know. Um, the other thing I remember about Pioneer School was um, I thought it was going to be some kind of magical thing going on because the way people have been talking about it, you know, all this information that you were going to be getting. Yeah. But when I opened up the book, I was very disappointed. And the reason why is because it was just a bunch of references and scriptures. And so all you did was just looked up, you know, Watch Tower and Awake magazines, you know, scriptures and everything it was nothing it was like one great big jehovah's witness meeting all dumped into one week that's what i remembered about pioneer school you know so it wasn't nothing really special i don't remember anything any great points that they made i just remember we were busy reading and studying that's yeah like I mean. that's the thing you know if there's people out there watching this and they've been to pioneer school you know i challenge them if it was a couple of years ago Think about wh what you remember when you think back to the Pioneer School. You're not going to remember things that you learned. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're going to remember the food. You're going to remember the, 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 the five hours of homework every, every night. And, and really, you're, you make people, you know, you, you kind of feed their ego because you make them feel special. Not everybody gets to come to the school, right? You're special, and that's why you're here. And, and, and that feeds inside of you, right? But but really, when you think about it, the school, if they're just going to tell you to look up these articles and look up these verses, well, you could do that at home. Like, why are we going to take a week, two weeks off work or a week off work um, of our vacation to come in and sit in a classroom where all we're going to do is study older Watchtower articles and Kingdom Ministries? You know, they don't convey any new information. That's the thing. Like, it, 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 there's nothing new. It was, it's just a matter of getting people in and making sure they know what's written in the publications. And you know what? They could familiarize themselves with the publications at home. Uh, so that's why, in, in my opinion, uh, yeah, it was nice to be together with people for that week or two, right? Um, there were some really nice people there. But, but wait a minute. They didn't teach us anything new. I don't remember half the things that they even taught me. As uh, you know, I, Nothing stands out. Um, so. You know, why is all, why all the hype? Why all the hype about, you know, this is divine teaching. This is Jehovah teaching. Let me ask you a question, Paul. Um, yeah. What do you think is the real purpose of these schools? I mean, the society has lots of schools, you know, ministerial training schools over the years. And the reason I asked that is because uh, the point you have made is right on point. There is not any new technique for teaching people in the ministry when the pioneers come back from the from Pioneer School. In other words, I'm going to show, I'm going to take a regular, I'm a regular pioneer. I just attended Pioneer School, and I'm going to show you some of the techniques that we were shown in class as to how to carry on the ministry. 
you don't get that. There is nothing. In fact, you get basically the same thing that the person got because at the school, you literally went over the same magazines that the other person went over. So what would you say is the real purpose of setting up these various types of schools in view of the fact that the information you're going to go over is exactly what every other Jehovah's Witness gets? It's a form of indoctrination. It's they want to make you memorize what's written, all of their doctrines and their teachings that are in the Watchtower, that are in the Kingdom Ministry. They want to make sure you do things their way, that you know what's written, because you're 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 a better witness if you know all, everything that's written, all of the little interpretations and doctrines. So it's kind of like you bring in these key people every once in a while to make sure that they haven't forgotten that this is the way it is, or if you don't know. What this prophecy in Ezekiel is about, you better know it because you got to support it, and and you got to you know pass this on when you go back to your congregation. So it, it's really about it's not about getting into the scriptures and meditating on it and and trying to you know gather you know understanding of the scriptures because they never in Pioneer School and in Couple School they never said brothers we want you to go home and read tonight uh, Galatians one to five. And meditate on it for oh, an hour or so, and then you know tomorrow we'll, we'll just cut, we'll talk about what everybody thinks about it, right? No, it's never like that. It's always a, a massive amount of watchtowers and kingdom ministries, and you you're you're quizzed on it with questions as to what does uh, you know this mean and what does that mean in this and 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 you're you're expected to answer from the publications. So it's all about getting people to be the most familiar about what's written, not in the scriptures, but in the publications. Uh, so you're, it's, you're drumming this in by repetition so that they memorize what are the teachings of it written in the Watchtower or in the Kingdom Ministry. And even tactics, like, you know, you talked about techniques, right? Um, they do ter- teach certain techniques in the schools, but where is it from? It's right out of the Kingdom Ministry. You know, like, it's, you know, here's a sample presentation or here's a way to overcome an objection. And, but again, it, it, these are all things that you could just read yourself at home. So it's indoctrination. And it's also like uh, Lady C mentioned, it's an, it's an opportunity to make the person feel special. And when they feel special, they'll feel like they owe the organization, you know, that they treated me special. Therefore, you know what? I, I gotta be, I gotta be kind in return. I got, I gotta give back because now I owe them one because they invested in me. They made me feel special, so therefore I love them because they made me feel special, you know. Um, so it's, I think it's a combination of uh, a big thing of they want to make sure you memorize what's written in the publications, and they want to make you feel special so that you're going to go and you're going to support all of those doctrines and, and teachings that you freshened up in or memorized for the first time after going through the school. I'd like to say one more thing about Pioneer School that I do, now that I think about it, remember, and one of the things that they actually talked about was credit cards. And so with what it was about, you know, how you're feeling special and you're on this, um, you know, you are a regular Pioneer. And one of the things during the school that they talked about was basically your credit, you know, if you have credit cards, you're going to get into debt. And this is going to get you off the list pretty quick because you're going to need to get a job to pay for these things you're trying to buy on credit. So I remember them talking about that. And they were trying to make you feel like you're so special that you never want to, you know, come off the list. Mm -hmm. So when it really came to what you're learning at this school, it was really all about how to stay on the list, you know, Mm -hmm. because that was a big thing in my class. You know, some people were frustrated because, you know, when you go to pioneer school, you're generally going after you've, you know, completed at least one year of pioneering. So people were there talking about how rough it was for them to remain on the list. And so then they were giving you different um, things to think about that would get you off the list. And so I remember them talking about credit card Uh, spending and not using credit cards because that would be a real quick thing that would get you off the list you know 
Yeah, and you know, I know people that um, in order to get the two weeks off to go to Pioneer School, some of them lost their jobs, right? Because their boss was not going to give them the time off. And I can't imagine the disappointment uh, that someone might have where they've just lost their job, they're at Pioneer School, and it's supposed to be this divine teaching, and all you're doing is delving into Watchtowers and Kingdom Ministries and repeating what you read in the paragraph when the instructor asks you the question. And But they make you feel special. They give you, you know, all this attention. Um, so, you know, at the end of the school, you might have this kind of fake high, right? That, oh, this was really special. But when you actually examine the teaching, there was nothing special about it. I'm sorry. You know, and, and it was, they overloaded the students. And, and this went on for years. And I don't, I don't know what it's like right now, 2019. But for decades, it was just overload of information. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think back to Jesus, and he didn't say, you know, uh, I'll tell his apostles, I, I want you guys to read up on these things for five hours tonight, and I'm going to quiz you on this tomorrow. That didn't happen, you know? So why are, why is it with the organization, they're, they're loading you with hours of homework of just reading Watchtowers and Kingdom Ministries, and then they're calling that divine teaching. I'm sorry, like, I don't buy that. You, you, you pull someone away from their job, they maybe even lose it. You better be sure that you're going to give them something special. You know, if you're calling it divine teaching, that they're going to walk away and say, wow, this was amazing of all these things I learned. Wait a minute. All you did was go back to Watchtowers and Kingdom Ministries and reread them. You know, and they were probably articles that maybe came out before you got baptized. So you didn't know about But you could have done that at home. You know, and if it was about the association, you didn't have to pull people away from their jobs for a week or two. For them to get some good association with other nice people. I mean, we do that all. The, we would do that all the time when we'd have get-togethers, our backyard barbecues, or or even you know build a kingdom hall and you'd sit around at lunch and talk and you know everyone enjoy each other's company. So it, to, to to tell people that this is divine teaching and then they get there and it's five hours of homework every night and all it is is stuff that they could have read at home. I'm sorry, that doesn't just doesn't fit. You know, you're you're making it look as if it's something special. And it's not. If anything that was special, maybe it's some of your friends that are there that you really enjoy spending some time with. Yeah. Well, the other thing I like to say about pioneering, though, is the perks that you used to get back before the uh, complete donation arrangement. And a lot of people, you know, you got your meal tickets free. You got your literature 50 percent off. So, you know, if you're going to be paying like 50 dollars for magazines, you only only pay 25 dollars. I'm just putting it out there like an an increase of 25 dollars. That's like a membership. Like, like belong in the Costco. I'm just kidding. But it's like, you know, being on the pioneer list back in the day, it had more perks back then than it does now. So people did see something. I, they felt that they were getting something out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, I think about is that, um, and I, I, this, I, I tell people all this time, everybody who watches the video know my, my views on this. This is a business. Society is a business. And what businesses do is they set up corporate goals. They set up corporate levels. And the Watchtower does exactly the same thing. Uh, In my view, these schools are basically designed to make people feel that they are part of something. Something, as you mentioned, that's special. I'll give you an example. Jehovah's Witnesses, when they're asked, do you guys have a Sunday school program for the children? Well, the witnesses are very quick to say, no, we don't, know, we don't have no mean for those, no kids. They, they, they right there with the rest of everybody else. They right there learn the same thing, learn the same thing. Yeah. And so the question you have to ask is, the Watchtower does the same thing. They don't set up a Sunday school. They set up another type of school. And so if it's important that everybody learn the same thing, and that's what witnesses will tell you why they don't have a Sunday school, then why do you have these special ministry schools? Because everybody should know how to preach and teach the word of God. That's what we're supposed Mm -hmm. to be doing. Mm -hmm. So why is it you have created literally an entity that does not exist scripturally? There is no such thing as a special pioneer scripturally. This is a corporate entity. This is a corporate concept. And so they make people feel special. I'll give you just a perfect example. In many congregations, after um, the pioneers at the end of the year, especially if you have a large number of pioneers in the congregation, many congregations will give what is known as the pioneer dinner. Yeah, we call it the pioneer party. We call it the pioneer party, pioneer dinner. Now, 
Witnesses talk about how we don't elevate people. We don't celebrate people. But yet that is what the purpose of it is. Let me just give you an example of how it was done in our congregation. Now look back then, you, you see how ridiculous it was. All the auxiliary pioneers were invited to work as part of the kitchen crew. Those who prepared and served the meals at the pioneer dinner. And I remember this one elder leaned back in his chair and says, when well, y'all become regular pioneers, y'all will be able to sit down at the table too. Okay? <laughs> so, so the organization does a lot of things exactly that they condemn other religions for doing. And so the pioneer school, and that was why I've always asked people, well, did you learn anything new? And there's a nod. And I remember when I looked through, because I didn't go, I remember when I looked through Lady C's book, I'm like, man, that's not like a regular watchtower. You know I mean, it's just it's nothing new in here. And so that's what it is. But as we've all discussed, it makes people feel special. You're part of an exclusive group. Whenever you can segment people into different groups and you say you have this privilege and others do not, by default, you're elevating in people in, in groups. I mean, and so the organization, while it condemns other religions, they turn around and in their own special way, they do exactly the same thing. And you know, as I say, no, nobody does hypocrisy like the Watchtower. They, I mean, they got it down to a science. And, and by creating those separate levels, it also gives people on those lower levels the incentive that if they do more, they can get these special privileges. It's kind of like, you know, I was reading Animal Farm. And, you know, it, part of it in Animal Farm is if you produce more for the farm, we're going to give you an extra ration of corn or an extra ration of this. Like they tell the animals this, right? So all the animals start being more because they want to have these special uh, privileges, right? Um, and and they even have medals that they give to one another. So again, it, like you said, it's 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 very business like because basically, if you sign up as a pioneer, we're going to let you have this special meeting with the circuit overseer when he comes around. No one else is allowed to come. Um, we're going to have this special school for you. We're going to have a special meeting for you after the circuit assembly. We're going to have uh, a, a party of appreciation for all that you're doing. And it, it's funny because I remember a sister that she was pioneering and her circumstances changed. And, you know, this was when the hour requirement had changed. So it was now 70 hours, but she couldn't do 70 hours. All she could do was like 60, 65. And she was doing that regularly. And the elders were like, sorry, you know what? You're con consistently not getting your hours. So you're going to have to come off the list. And boy, did she bawl her eyes out. And I was like, wait a minute, before you did 70 hours for Jehovah, now you're doing 65. <laughs> what are you worried about? Or like, you're, you're pretty well doing the same amount. And it's because all of those extra perks, she wasn't going to get anymore, right? So it wasn't about really, you know, doing these things for Jehovah. It was about doing the things and getting credit for it, getting these perks for it, right? Like, I'll give you an example. If the organization were to say right away, you know what, we're going to eliminate all of these, you know, statuses like auxiliary pioneer, regular pioneer. Let's just say they go with regular pioneer. We're not going to have regular pioneers anymore. Now, those you can do seventy hours. We're not going to give you a special name. We're not going to have a special meeting for you or a special party. Just do what you can. Do you know how many people are now not going to do seventy hours? They're going to drop down to thirty hours right away, forty hours, because they're thinking, "What's the point of me doing more? Because I'm not going to get any recognition for it." Right, like if they took that designation and all those perks away, people right away were like, "Why am I killing myself?" Right, I'm just going to do what I what what's going to be easier to do. Right, they're not going to go out and kill themselves to get their time in. It, it, so it just shows you that people are doing this so that they can maintain the name of being a pioneer and get all these perks. Yes, that's exactly right, and that is why the society has created uh, over the years. They create this interesting little entity. It's known as the Pioneer Infirm List. That is equivalent to people who work in companies and so forth, and they've been the CEO for 45, 50 years. They don't want to just put them out the pasture, so they give them this, this very special name, Emerius. He's the CEO, Emerius. He don't do nothing. He don't even come to the office, but he still gets to wear the title CEO. That's the same thing the society has. You can dress that monkey up any way you want to. That is the same thing. A pioneer who is on the pioneer and firm list has no hourly quota, but they maintain the status. They get to be presented to thousands in assemblies. This was a pioneer in the congregation. And so the organization and this hypocrisy and the way it runs things, this is what they do. 
I mean, this is what, and you made an excellent point. I've had a conversation with a lot of elves. What would happen if they got rid of the pioneers? You think the girls stay out here? No, nah, they wouldn't be out in the snow. They wouldn't. Yeah. So these are corporate, that's why I tell people, these are corporate goals, corporate entities that have nothing to do with the scripture. Um, I, I think back to, um, I think sometime earlier early this year, last year, the society produced a video. And in this video, they were demonstrating to elders how you conduct a meeting with a pioneer who was falling down in their hours. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, this is really amazing when you think about it. These elders, very busy men, you know, I mean, elders got their own families, they work, they do all this kind of stuff. They are showing them how to meet with someone who is involved in a process or an entity that don't even exist in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. They're discussing how to get the corporate goals. Can you imagine if the society did a video, this is how you meet with families who are having problems with their kids. This is how you meet with families who are having marital problems. That, that video wasn't, that's not what they was pushing. They were pushing yeah. You elders take the time out of your schedule. Go meet this sister because she's not meeting corporate goals and let her know. Mm -hmm. And you're right about people crying. I, I have seen people cry too. Uh, when they had to come off the list, they cry. But now let me tell you the little hidden secret that I didn't know. I, I did not know this until I became an elder. Because it's not talked about. It's not published in the magazines. Nobody discusses it. Mm -hmm. When I was pioneering, the goal was you got to hit a thousand hours, a thousand hours thousand hours well i came i come to find out that you don't have to hit a thousand now you don't have to even hit nowhere near it it was like 720 it was like 720 if you made your 720 every year you could still remain a pioneer and they wouldn't take you off the list but they didn't tell anybody so you would have people out there missing lunch not going on bathroom breaks staying out <laughs> late at night this and that just to get a thousand dollars because they believe and they were told that you have to get a thousand, and if you get like nine hundred, then we'll have to write a letter and explain it. I mean, it was amazing that I, the, the society really only required like seven twenty. If you got seven twenty, you wouldn't go off the list. But they didn't tell nobody. Yeah. And the only the only reason I say that is because of a, of a job experience I had um, when I was a field tech, we had a we had corporate goals: how many calls you had to do, how many service calls you had to do every 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 day. And so every month, the corporate headquarters would send out what the quota was for that quarter. And so we had this regional director who got the letter and he rewrote the letter. He rewrote the letter and he bumped the numbers up and he bumped them up pretty high. And then he sent this to all the local offices. So we got it and everybody was like, oh man. And so technicians were staying out late at night because they wanted to get their goal because that you could be evaluated on this. And people were literally, getting, techs were getting sick. I mean, people were just complaining. And man, somebody called the corporate office. This is, I, I just can't do this. And they're like, what are you talking about? Y'all told us our goal was, you know, 15 calls a day. And they're like, oh, we didn't. Your goal was 15, it was only 10. And like, well, <laughs> it says 15 on our paper. It's one paperwork. And they faxed it up to the corporate office. We used to be faxing back in the day. And, and man, this dude almost, this, 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 this regional director, this guy, this regional guy, this regional manager, he lost his job because of that. Because what was happening was, his numbers as a regional man were spectacular, but he was killing his people. And so when I found out after I became an elder, my first year as an elder, like, well, you know, they don't have to get Sister Johnson, we don't have to get a thousand hours, but you know, the society has a sister goal. But we didn't, we couldn't tell Sister Johnson that. And so here she is struggling with two kids, trying to be out in the fields early at night, all that kind of crazy stuff. And so once again, as I tell people, man, when you step behind the curtain, man, it's just so corporate. It's it's like a business, and they they, they treat the publishers just like corporations treat their employees. You are disposable. And when we're done with you, we'll discard you and we'll get the next pioneer to take your place. I mean, it's, 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 it's very sad. It's very sad. Yeah, and, and you know, it really is a badge because just think about it, like what you mentioned about the infirm list. Like here's someone that's no longer a pioneer, but when I keep calling him pioneer, why does that happen? Because the person, they've had so many instances where the person goes into a depression or complains and stamps their feet so that they can keep the designation, even though they're no longer a pioneer. So it's just showing you how much they value that name, that badge, because if it's taken away, they get into a depression. They, they, 
they, they're like, oh, no, 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 I've been a pioneer so long. Can something be done for me, you know? And, and okay, yeah, we'll let you keep the designation of pioneer. Oh, well, now everything's okay. Everything is just peaceful now, you know? So it, it just shows you that it's not about, it, it, you know, I, I'm sure for some pioneers, they feel they're giving to Jehovah. Fine, I'll give that to them, right? Um, if that's what they believe in their mind. But if you weren't given the designation of pioneer, if they had limited it altogether, how much would you do? Would you even, would you even, you know, force yourself on those cold winter mornings that will stand out there or go visit gas stations in the middle of the night so you can keep counting your time when, you know, everybody else is sleeping? Um, no, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't be killing yourself, right? But you're doing it because you want to keep the designation because it means you get all these extra things. Can you guys do me a favor as Bethelites? Now, I know this because of JT telling me. Now, I understand that the number of years that you pioneer also would determine what type of room you got at Bethel. Was it the same way at in Toronto? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, you know, your years of full-time service is, is kind of like credit. Right. So the more years you got, the more they're going to treat you with special privileges. So there's this incentive to stay in the full time service, because as you get those years, you get more vacation days. You can bid on a different room. There's privileges in both in Bethel. And it all goes basically on, on the years in full time service. So, you know, if if someone has got 40 years in full time service, he's going to win. He's going to get the award and nobody else will. Right. So it's, yeah, it's, it, again, it's, it's an incentive-based system where you're giving someone an award for doing more and it makes them feel good. So they don't want to lose that designation because if they lose it, it means they're not going to be given all these awards anymore. What about, what about um, a break in service? How was that treated? Uh, how do you mean break in service? So like, like you're pioneering, so let's say, let's say you pioneer from 1980 to 1990, and then you got to come off the list for five years, and then, you know, you go back on the list in the year 2000, and are they going to give you a cumulative credit for what you did? For yeah, those you never years? lose those years. All those years in full time, sorry, even, even if you stepped out, they're, they're, they're banked, right? It's always to your credit. Okay. And the bragging point was always being able to say continuous. Yeah. Continuous in full time service for 20. No break. You know, and so and that was and, and that was a big deal. People, because uh, you know, when you leave Bethel, the society gives you like a few months to come back on the pioneer list so that you can keep saying that you have a continuous non-break in your service. And at the end of the day, what we keep talking about is nothing that has anything to do with God. Bible, Jesus, Moses, none of that. This is just corporate stuff. And it is viewed as something that's divine or something that's related to your service to God. Like you were saying, the pioneer sister, she's clocking 80, 90 hours a month. Okay, you can't pioneer, but you turn, but you can do 50 and you're depressed. And everybody else is doing 10. There's something wrong with a system where you are now evaluated and you do self-evaluation based on corporate goals. Um, yeah. and, and these things were not something that the apostles did. Also had no such thing as auxiliary pioneer. You, you you just preach the word of God and call it a day. Went well, on. I think it's milk the cow. You know. <laughs> I, I personally think it's the ultimate, um, really, a, a, really a bad thing because, like, at least when you, um, you know, when you were, when you would get frequent flyer miles with an airline, or you're like you get you get to get you know free airline um, trips and also with hotels. Even when you do mar to level marketing you could actually, you know, capitalize on something. But in the Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not really getting much because the average person doesn't go to Bethel to cash in on the years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now that they've got the complete donation arrangement, the I remember the pioneers, they were still expected to pay full price for the literature where mm -hmm. they used to get it half off. You know, so yeah. you're not really getting any perks anymore by pioneer. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what's done here now, but when I was in the Dominican Republic, I remember going to the district assembly, right? And when they'd be in introducing someone, now let's interview Sister Son Ho, so who's a pioneer in this congregation who has 15 years in full-time service, right? 
Or now let's listen to brother so-and-so who's serving in an elder in this congregation who has 25 years in the full-time service. Like they're, they're, it, like all of us that had part, a participation, even myself, I remember sitting behind the platform, they're going to call me up to, to give my district assembly part. And they're like, here, we're going to present Paul, uh, brother so-and-so for this part. And he's got this. I'm like, why do they even need to mention that? Like I was actually against it. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to give you recognition in front of this huge crowd. It makes you feel good because you're being paid back for all those years that you think. And, and realistically, ladies, between you and me, you're not being paid back not, pretty well nothing. What they're giving you is they're tooting a horn for you. They're, they're giving you recognition in front of men, in front of thousands of people, but that's all you get. But it's enough to keep people going. That, oh, yeah, I can walk around and everybody knows that I've been this many years in full-time service. So they were really glorifying people when they would introduce them at the assemblies. And I was like, I never mentioned it to anyone, but I was just like, every time I heard it, it was just like, it bothered me. I was like, why do they even need to do that? They could just say, let's listen to brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, and that's it, right? But they have to mention all the things that they had done for the organization. It goes back to, it goes back to the hypocrisy of the organization. As Jehovah's Witnesses, we condemn the we thought nothing of people who had alphabets behind their name. You know, he's mm-hmm. so and so his master's degree. You know, we 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 look we looked down upon that. I mean, we we didn't. If someone had alphabets behind their name, we didn't think out of that. Yeah. And yet we turn around and created our own system of alphabets. Like you mm-hmm. were saying, yeah. every brother now, and, and then you have governing body helper. Why you why do I need to know he's a helper of the governing body? He's mm-hmm. just be serving God, call the day. And so once again, we see how the society will condemn these various things of those on the outside and they will reinvent their own form or their own style on the inside. And Mm -hmm. it's now acceptable Uh, because I mean, I, I, I mean, I've heard so many people make that point. Like and so and so all of a sudden you will have a brother who might not have no credentials, as it were, walk up on stage. Brother Johnson, you've been partying for eight months. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there, there's no extended introduction, and the, and the brother is probably think probably feeling bad. He's like, "Oh my god, they didn't have much to say about me." I, 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 I got you know, like I'm a nobody, even though I'm giving this part. You know, <laughs> I just tell you, I just remember so many people during the time that I was pioneering, and when somebody was about to come off the list, everybody would like rally around them to keep them on the list, and so nobody was saying, "You need to really take you know take some time off and." and get yourself mm-hmm. together. So anyway, I remember when I was pioneering and the elders in my congregation, they saw that I was struggling to get my time. So I remember the elders in my congregation, they said, we well, tell you what, why don't you just come off the list and plan your wedding because you only get married once. And so they made me feel so good. They validated the fact that I'm coming off the list and they made me feel good about it, and I and I felt like a load had been lifted off my shoulders. Yeah, because it was like the elders said that I wasn't getting in any trouble or anything. They just said, "Plan your wedding, have a great time, come back on the uh, the pioneer list later on." And I remember sharing that experience in our congregation, the one that we went to, me and JT, mm-hmm. and the sisters were like, "What?" And they were looking at me like, "Why would they say that?" So JT finally told me, he said, will you please stop telling people that? Because that's not the norm. People don't yeah, even exactly. come off the what, list. What the elders told you is very a very rare occurrence. Yeah. You know? um, and, you know, I even, I remember there was this one brother who was coming off the list. And because um, he, he was going to get married, right? And to be honest, right in that moment, I was a Pharisee. Because I was like, why are you coming off the list, man? You can do this. You can you can pioneer and get married. And I insinuated that he didn't have faith in Jehovah, right? Because, hey, you know, Jehovah is going to take care of you. You can pioneer and get married. So many other people do it all the time, right? That was my reasoning with him, right? But he felt that basically I was saying he didn't have faith in Jehovah. And he had a point. And you know what? I wrote him a letter of apology afterwards because I realized it wasn't my business to say whether or not he had enough faith in Jehovah or not. And um, again, that was part of when I woke up, I realized a lot of different conversations I had with people. And I'm like, I got to apologize for some things that I said to people because 
I was towing the line. I, you know, I thought I was trying to encourage him that he could still pioneer and get married. But like you guys said, that's the norm. That's what elders do. So it was pretty rare, like in your case, Lady C, that they actually said, you know what? Don't worry about pioneer. You can start later. Uh, you can get back to it. Go, go plan your wedding. Have fun. There are a few elders like that in the organization that they're more relaxed and, and they're not total policy men. And, but those are few and far between, I can tell you, because the majority do not go that way. Yeah, and, and that, for me personally, that, that, that becomes, you know, applying critical thinking skills. That's what you really have to stop and think about. You, you made the point that the person walked away feeling that his faith in God was on the line. And, and, and we're talking about an entity that don't exist in the Bible now has your faith on the line. There is no such thing as being a regular party, and so it has nothing to do with your faith. This is something that society just set up. These are called call portals. I mean, these are just corporate goals. And they have taken these human entities and put them on the status of something that is divinely required. You are demonstrating your lack of faith. And I remember so many elders and so many speakers getting on platforms and saying, do you have the faith? It has nothing to do with faith. And, 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 and you can only see that when you leave the organization and look back like, man, that was a corporate goal. like being a, a silver star or a gold diamond in, in some multi-level market organization. That's all it really was. And it's so yeah. sad. Yeah, exactly. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.